So it's time to take this dagger onto the next stage. And with uh, nettle fibers, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ply some cordage and go around the handle and settle that down with some pine pitch glue. And then um, I've got a damp piece of leather here, which has been smoked and bucks, uh, it's been buckskinned and brained and um, re-soaked this morning to soften it. That's what we're gonna do to, um, we're gonna be using that to make the sheath for the dagger. Whilst we tell you another chapter of Finn's adventure of being chased away from his valley by the Ice Age. Chapter five, dreams. We atcha, we atcha, acha. We atcha, we atcha, acha. Not after the worst day you could ever consider, a four hour journey down the river and fish and honey plus a camp built, the little travel travellers were settled down for their second night's sleep. The fire was good and burning brightly, and snuggled together, they all fell asleep. Crunch, 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 Finn, Finn heard footsteps and woke up, but not a sound was to be heard. He laid there listening, but all he could hear was his own breath. Wee acha, wee acha, acha. Far away in his head, he began to hear the chant again, and suddenly it was like a floating white face with black tail eyes and horns on its head racing towards him. But somehow he just went straight through the black tail eyes and was travelling at high speed through a black tunnel. Even though he was apparently asleep, he could feel his outstretched arms and fingernails trying to slow himself down. And then puff, he was sitting in the middle of tall flames, looking around at dancing men with painted faces with black bear skins on their backs. He screamed and woke up, shaking and sweating. His mother and father were holding him. Father was holding Finn's sweaty head, and looking at Finn's mother, he spoke. The elders are here, and they have found Finn. Ma looked at father and knew what he was saying, even without having to have a long conversation. Time was knocking, and the elders were at the son Finn's door. From this point in time forward, the outcome was not written in the sand. Finn's choices were going to influence everything. Over father's life, he had many encounters with what he described as the elders. These were elemental spirits, people of the land, who had great wisdom and earth knowledge. Having encounters with them usually was considered as a good omen, a time of growth and spiritual expansion. They restoked the fire and managed to get a bit more sleep, even though it had begun to snow. At first light, everything felt much different. The ground was covered with snow. The lean-to roof had worked, but it was now somewhat lower with the weight of the snow on it. They made their way to the big broken tree to collect the honey, which was in the form of large sticky rods hanging down from a ledge above. Then they went off and found a large dead standing silver birch tree and pulled some big sheets of bark off to wrap the rods of honey in. Then warmed the bark tubes up over the fire because this tightens the bark into tubes and with some silver birch polypore bracket fungus they cut some bungs to cap the ends. The snow crunched loudly below their feet and they were looking for signs of animals passing such as yellow pea stains but apart from a few bird footprints there was nothing else. They got themselves ready to carry on down the river but although there was only about four inches of snow it stopped the skates working so this morning they had to walk although they devised the skates and rods into little rafts and pulled them along behind with the backpacks on the rafts. It was much lighter this way. It was a very grey morning, bitterly cold with no sun. Finn was very glad of his wolf skin that he had around his neck, as unlike some skins, the hair on wolf skin doesn't freeze. They walked for about three or four hours, not saying much, but just trying to cover some distance. Finn was thinking about his dad's answer. Where are we going, Dad? Here, son. Don't look at the destination. It will drive you mad. Finn thought... 
This is pretty harsh right now. The river was widening and a rushing rubbing sound could be heard along with the wind cutting through the bare branches on the trees. The strange sound was coming from below. It was the water travelling under the ice and there were patchy spots on the snow where it had melted, leaving watery circles. This was beginning to look like a problem as the ice was definitely getting thinner. They all knew of the trouble this would bring if they broke through the ice. The banks just looked like a giant sea of reeds and bramble and now looked a bit more like a trap than a safe way forward. How much longer could they trust this route? For all Finn's dad's Stone Age skills, he was tr struggling to find an easy, easy answer to this one. There was an eagle circling above and Finn wished he had wings right now. They pulled over to the side of the bank and Dad made a small tinder bundle and struck a spark into it. Soon it was a smouldering bundle and he added some sacred herbs into it that made it crackle and the smoke slightly green. Holding it above his head, he began blowing smoke towards a circling eagle while talking in a very strange language. Bara bu selo shi, bara bu selo shi, went the words his father was repeating. The eagle seemed to take notice and fly down in a circle, then directly overhead, screeching its eagle cry, then flew off in a southeasterly direction. Finn didn't have any words, just, um, wow. What did you just do, Dad? Dad looked at Finn and explained that he had appealed to the spirit of the eagle to show him the best way to travel as he could see all of the ground below. So they crossed the frozen river one more time in the direction the eagle had flown and climbed up the reed bank on the other side. While they crossed, they could hear the ice cracking underfoot and knew that with no doubt that the river for now was no longer a way to travel. So I guess they're in for a bit of a rough ride now as they're moving away from the river. Anyway, I'm just currently settling down some pine pitch glue around the nettle fibre cordage that I've made. I'll wash that in a flame once I've actually put some of the um, resin and coated the whole surface and that will be the knife done um, and then we'll just move on and create its scabbard hope you're enjoying this um, little story as you know I'm making this up I haven't read this from a book this is a story which has been kind of living in me for a few years and I thought if I didn't start it it would never come out so I'm glad that I'm doing it and um, I'm glad that you're listening <laughs>